Hello awesome people! I hope you're having an amazing day today. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to the short story from the 2nd century AD by Lucian, which is generally considered by many uh, science fiction uh, experts to be the first science fiction short story. It's called A True Story. It's written by the satirist Lucian, who's a, who's from Greek, uh, and so he has a Greek. Uh, he's living in the, in the Roman Empire, obviously during the time, uh, and he's somebody of a Greek descent uh, and living there at that time. So he's definitely been doing a deep dive into it. Now this thing is very very short. It's really more of a novella length, if you will. I read it last night in less than an hour and forty five minutes, about one uh, forty three. Uh, so just a couple minutes on shy of a minute of an hour 45 minutes it very very quick it's divided into two books the first book took me about 50 minutes for me to read uh, so it was roughly about halfway through about the same length uh, for me to knock out the next book so it's definitely equal equally divided you can easily knock it out in two chunks um my uh, interpret i also uh, you can also read this online on projectgutenberg.com so i will link you to both of these the free one on uh, project gutenberg in this version that i purchased on amazon in case you want to read the uh, print version like i like to as well I also like to contribute to these sorts of things. Now, remember, the name of my channel is the worst thing uh, phrased by an 18th century French philosopher named Jacques Joubert, who said that the worst thing about new books was that they kept us from reading the, the, the old books. And this is definitely an old book. It's a classic. It's, the first, it's considered by many scholars to be the first uh, science fiction novel ever written. So knocking it out is definitely something that is definitely an old book, right? And so I, I like to read old books, old short stories, old novellas in this case, uh, older, you know, these are older written works, and then review them for you with my three review views a week. So this is definitely something that's, that definitely counts. And this is the oldest thing. Uh, now, again, my reviews uh, looks at science fiction and fantasy and horror, those three genres. Uh, this definitely has some fantasy elements to it. Uh, it has, it well, I, and, and let me rephrase that by saying it's really more mythical elements to it uh, than fantasy. It's not like a traditional, like, epic fantasy by chair or Tolkien or a, or a sword and planet fantasy feel, like, like, uh, you know somebody like uh you, you know the uh the the mars series or you know the conan the barbarian uh light light handed stuff or the the law versus chaos epicness of the uh, the michael stackpole eternal champion series right it's definitely something that feels a little different uh, so it's more mythical than I would say a traditional sort of a modern fantasy in that sense. So I would probably put more in that sort of it's it's, it's got more mythical elements to it. Uh, but it definitely uh, has a science fiction core concept. So here's what's why what's why I'm happy. And now again, I keep my reviews split free, so I won't give you what Lucian actually is doing or give away any spoilers or anything like that. The basic premise is that we're on a journey uh, by a boat in the similar vein to the Odyssey or other boat journeys uh, that are out there. And this boat leaves Earth and heads out to the heavens, into the stars. Uh, we'll get involved in a battle of dominance between the people of the sun and the people of the moon over their mutual colony that's over by the morning star. Uh, and then they'll come back to Earth. When they come back to Earth, they get swallowed by a whale. Uh, bad things happen. They have to get out. And then they'll run into mythical creatures, characters like uh, the people from the Odyssey and the Iliad, or uh, the people from uh, mythology and uh, science, and, and from, from other works, not just Homer's, two big ones. Uh, and so it, and so, and that's it. Uh, so again, it has a lot of mythological elements to it. Uh, like for example, it has uh, uh, Odysseus is in this. Uh, his wife Penelope is in this. They physically they appear. So that's why I think it's probably more mythical. Uh, than true than a true fantasy would be. It also has mythical creatures to, in it too that might have more of a modern fantasy feel to it. But I'd say it's more mythical. Uh, but again, you're out in the stars. You're in an interplanetary war. You're deals with, inter, with, with colonialism of other planets, right? It definitely feel and, and the characters of the race of people are very very different. For example, there are no women in the race of moon men and they have very different physical features than our own. Uh, definitely bizarre. So it's definitely something that feels science fiction uh, and fantasy-ish at the same time in, in the mythical sort of a genre. It was written as a satire by, and this guy's a satirist, that's what he's sort of known for. This is Lucien's most famous work. 
Uh, so, he, so if you're familiar with him, but you haven't had your chance to, uh, to read uh, the, the a true story, then I would definitely recommend it. But how do you evaluate and give a 10 rating uh, to something that's so old, so bizarre, something that defines a modern genre? I'm going to be giving it an eight because it's definitely a classic. It flows pretty quickly. It's been it's been translated by modern people, so it doesn't slow down like the Burning Earth that I just recently read for you by Margaret Cavendish. Uh, that was originally written uh, in English, you know, centuries ago. Uh, my copy of this, as well, and I also looked uh, for the copy online on Project Gutenberg, has has some original art uh, from an eighteen hundred from an from an eighteen hundreds uh, uh, presentation. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, so you get this old classic epic art, and I could not <laughs> recommend uh, that more. So again, we're going to give this a seven and eight out of ten because it's a genuine, it's a genuine classic. And it was considered a, a well-read uh, and well-loved thing for centuries after it was published. Uh, so if you were reading in the Roman world, you probably would have heard of Lucian, and you probably would have read a true story, uh, and so forth. Now, he says early on that this isn't true, but it's still called a true story, <laughs> uh, and so forth. Uh, it definitely has a lot of comedic and, and humorous elements to it. Uh, it feels a little Douglas Niles. Uh, I'm, I'm not Douglas Niles, I'm sorry. Douglas Adams, rather. Uh, from the Hey, Checkers Got It, a guy which also combines a satire uh, with, with, with a true science fiction sort of, of premise. And those two, I think, are, are definitely in this. I would not say that it's one or the other, but both at the same time. It holds its hand in both worlds. Uh, so anyway, there you are. I'll leave you to it. Have you read A True Story by Lucian? Uh, have you heard of it? What did you think of it? If you want to talk about spoilers, let's do so in the comments below those spoiler tags. Do you think it's an 8 out of 10? Do you think it's a 7 out of 10? Do you think it's a 9 out of 10? Do you think it's a 10 out of 10? Do you think it's a 2 out of 10? I would be happy to engage with us further in the comments below, whatever your thoughts are. If you like this video, hey, why not hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of these of all of them. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of the air today and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.